Hi guys, welcome back to Money and She. And today we are on our 12 week Yay! of grade week. Yeah. Thank you so much, especially dun sa mga naka subscribe na. And if you haven't subscribed yet, please subscribe and hit the notification button. Para lagi kang update. Okay, guys, so this week we will co cover another request from our subscribers, which is the Macro Asia Corporation or MAC. So if you're ready, let's start. Ayan, guys, so today we are discussing Macro Asia. So, ano ba yung Macro Asia? Honestly, hindi ko siya alam before. I've never traded Macro Asia until such time na, you know, a lot of you guys are actually asking about it. So that's the time that I actually look into it. Um, one of the things that probably hindi ko siya talaga tinrade before is because it's related to mining and medyo hindi kasi ako nag-invest sa mining unless I know na um, environmentally responsible sila. They do rehabilitation or something like that. And even if I look at their website, they should show that. And if you know me, I work for the environment. So it's very important. There there are some negative lists for me. Just just for me. Kasi syempre, I wanted to apply responsible investing in, in my investment. So therefore, I don't really invest on companies na I think na nakakasira sa environment natin. Uh, I'm not very sure about... Mac, because it's not in their website, but in fact, it should be in their website. Because before they are actually into aviation, they were actually doing mining. Pero uh, one thing that I really noticed about Mac is so bagal ng website nila. As in, hanggang ngayon naglo-load pa rin siya. Parang ayaw magpa-analyze. We'll start with the ABC strategy, which is analyze. So for analyze, first we move on to the qualitative analysis. So ano ba si Mac? Macro Asia. So Macro Asia is another uh, holding company. So if it's a holding, then it's a parent, then there are babies or subsidiaries or uh, companies under its umbrella. So Macro Asia is owned by Lushotan. So Lushotan, kilala naman natin siya, very famous. Siya yung hari ng bisho. <laughs> No, not really because um, honestly, uh, most of his businesses are related to uh, vices, diba? So related sa cigarette, tapos liquor, and then travel, diba mga bisyo yan. So, um, and we as Filipinos, medyo, we are known for having a lot of bisyo. So, um, in terms of business, maganda siya kasi um, it caters to uh, the society or the uh, us as a Filipino or maybe even in other countries. We can learn from his past. I will give you a little bit background of Lucio Tan lang just for this vlog. Pero it would be better to dig deeper pagka we are in the LT group na, yung LTG na, na uh, stocks when we do the analysis of that. So Lucio Tan, he is again from Fujian. Like mga sila Metro Bank. Siguro sabay-sabay silang napadpad dito, di ba? Kasi um, after the communist keme-keme in, in China. So nung pagpunta niya dito, um, he started as, ano, nag-working student siya, nag-chemical engineer siya sa FEU. Diba? Um, dapat yata na chemical engineer ako. Puro, <laughs> puro mayaman yung chem eh ngayon na si, si Jollibee. Tapos ngayon naman si Lucio Tan. Diba? Ganyan. So si Lucio Tan nag-start siya as janitor sa isang cigarette company. And then eventually dahil masipag siya, kinuha siya na, ay alam yun, sa planta na hanggang sa naging um, pataas na yung position niya. With his knowledge, nagtayo siya ng sarili niyang cigarette company. And then, that cigarette company became the number one cigarette company in the Philippines. Yay! Nakita nyo naman, di ba? Uh, most of the Chinese people, kung alam nyo sila, usually, nag-work muna sila sa corporation para matutunan nila kung paano nag-work yung businesses. And then, eventually, they will start their own. Tapos, they will compete, di ba? So, that's the way it is. Dapat, uh, you take advantage of every learning that you get from a company. Siyempre, they pay you for your work Diba? Pero sometimes, maliit lang yung sweldo mo, di ba? <laughs> so, dapat you have to make sure na on top of the maliit na sweldo that you're getting, you're also learning from it, di ba? The business itself, in in a sense, so in the future, you can start your own business, di ba? In the future then, if you wanted to move to another company, oh, the 
the more knowledge that you have, the more value that they will pay you, then you'll have higher salary. Okay? So after noon, after that, he moved from cigarettes to um, the liquor, tapas he owns the PAL, then uh, Philippine Airline. And then eventually, yun nga, naging ito na. Macro Asia, they, they acquired it. So before Macro Asia is actually a mining company, and then eventually it moved to aviation. And now, um, yung catering actually natuwa ako kasi when I was watching the video ni GMA about dun sa parang sarap magin taste tester dun sa ano nila sa catering nila, di ba parang um, titikman mo lahat ng food sa airline. And if you've ever traveled before, most likely nakapag-travel naman na kayo via airplane. Di ba masarap yung food? Except for Cebu Pacific. Hindi <laughs> ko talaga gusto yung food sa Cebu Pacific. Medyo na-stress ako nung they own that. Pero the food in Pal is definitely masarap. So ngayon, we are gonna look into what are the businesses under Macro Asia? And then we'll discuss one by one. Ano ba yung outlook? Ano ba yung growth potential nito? Diba? Ano ba yung kagandahan niya? Okay, guys. So, first of all, Lufthansa Technique Philippines. This is, I think, one of the maintenance. Yung maintenance ng mga aeroplano. Which is good kasi medyo wala yata sila masyadong competition in, in this area. And of course, lahat naman ng... Um, ng airlines, kailangan mag-maintenance. It's a very important thing. Kasi, syempre, ayaw naman natin na may mapahamak, diba? Dapat kailangan palaging okay yung maintenance ng aeroplano. Otherwise, nakatakot, diba? And Lufthansa is a German company. So, it's a good combination. Kasi, we know naman na G when it comes to um, German technology, syempre, maganda yan. Cebu Pacific Catering. Medyo hindi ko nagustuhan to kasi hindi ko talaga gusto yung food sa Cebu Pacific. Pero, gusto ko yung food sa PAL. So, I'm not sure. They, they also cater to other um, major airlines like Sing Air, Lufthansa, Airport Services Corporation, so, mukhang okay rin naman yung airport services. Again, yung um, tourism sa Philippines is growing. Um, it's not yet saturated in a sense. So, we we can still put more effort into that. And, you know, some countries like Thailand, yung tourism nila is higher. And it actually contributes a lot to their GDP. So, just imagine if the tourism industry in the Philippines actually grows then definitely it's gonna be a boom not just for um, them but also sa lahat ng mga local businesses in Philippines. So it's very important that we work together to improve the tourism industry in the Philippines and I think um, they're also you know doing that when it comes to um, marketing PAL it was really good, ha? Yung pag makita mo yung mga video sa online, ganyan. Even when I was in Korea, so medyo maganda yung marketing ni PAL. So, um, it's a good thing kasi di pinopromote din niya yung other areas in, in the Philippines. And of course, kung mas maganda yung services sa airport, mas masaya yung um, traveling experience. I'm a traveler, so this is really exciting for me to discuss kasi um, they kind of touch a lot of points that I really like. Um, and for me, it's very important na maganda yung airport experience ko kasi, um, you know, you stay there for quite a long time eh. Lalo na kung mah mahaba yung layover mo or kahit four hours lang, it's important na may internet connection, merong um, magandang maraming food and everything else and mabilis yung services so i can say naman in terms of ano sa pal medyo hindi sila pag international flights hindi sila masyadong na -de delay which is good i'm not sure if that's related to that pero mukhang ganun <laughs> Macro Asia Catering Services Inc. What's good about the catering services is yun nga, um, aside from the fact that they're actually catering to the airports or the airlines and also dun sa mga pagka business class ka kasi, they offer this yung parang habang nagaantay ka, may mga free foods. They actually expanded, not just in the airline, pero pinupush na rin nila yung other ano, company. So, nag, nag, uh, ano na sila, nag expand sila ng catering services sa mga businesses, ba Kasi, syempre, may mga pantries yan. So, 
Siyempre, malaki, malaki na yung, yung commissary nila. So, why not just provide it to them? Kasi like, for example, before when I was working, usually yung mga companies, they have canteen inside the building para mas makatipid ka. Kasi of course, if you always buy outside, medyo pricey, di ba? E pag starting ka pa lang, mat maliit lang yung sweldo mo. So, kailangan, uh, they also provide that. So, uh, they are expanding towards that. And that, area is kind of huge. Manajo malaki yun. So, it's good if they can actually uh, take advantage of that. The problem is, syempre, yung mga smaller companies, they might displace them. Syempre. So, yun yung magiging competition. Of course, if they're big, their price would be definitely lower than those small companies in terms of volume, diba? So, I hope lang they, can, they will not displace almost everything kasi kawawa naman yung mga small businesses. I hope they uh, focus on those who doesn't have it yet and wanted to have it para, you know, or they have this some kind of partnership with smaller companies para they can also share the, ano, the earnings with them. Mas maganda na siguro yan in terms of holistic growth. They have Macro Asia Air Taxi Services Inc. First Aviation Academy Inc. Macro Asia Mining Corporation. I think they're not really into mining itself but they're more on the services for those mining companies. So they, they do the mining. I I cannot read because the ano sobrang bagal. I'm not sure if it's open pit mining or yung magdidig ka. Oh yeah, they have wastewater. Ito naman yung gusto ko kasi ako, I, be, before I left my previous job, I actually have a project in Nepal which is funded by Bill Gates and Melinda Foundation. I was really happy and excited about it but I have to quit. Sayang. What is good about the wastewater treatment side is that hindi pa siya saturated. Unlike renewable energy, andyan na lahat, nag, naka-ready na silang lahat. So, ibig sabihin, magsustart pa lang siya. And at the same time, um, yung energy kasi, 25% lang yan ng pollution sa buong mundo. Um, another 25% is coming from agriculture. And then, around 10 to 15 yata percent is water. And water is very important kasi yung mga chemicals na yan na ginagamit sa mga manufacturing, kailangan i-treat mo na yan bago ibalik sa river. Most of the ano, um, industries or manufacturing or anything requires water. Dahil kailangan nila ng water, nagtatayo sila ng planta, usually malapit sa river. Kaya yung ilog pasig, di ba, napakadumi niya. Kasi yung along that river, maraming manufacturing sites na nandun. And after nila gamitin, kukunin nila yung water sa, sa river, tapos ibabalik lang nila nang hindi nila nililinis. And that is very harmful. Not just for for those who are living around that area. Kasi yung yung tubig na yon na dumadaan, sisipsip yun ng, ano, ng lupa. So, lahat yun, apektada tayong lahat. Kadiri yun. Kung alam nyo lang, lahat ng kinakain natin, medyo kadiri. Kasi, narami ng chemicals dyan. Importante na, we are moving towards protecting our environment and wastewater and water distribution is one of those things that we really have to, to look into. And that's very good. I really like the fact that they are um, moving towards that industry. There's a lot of funders as well. They can easily get financing, especially sa international, yung low-cost financing kasi it's something that is really needed and very few companies are looking into it. So, there's a very good positioning uh, for them, especially naka-start na sila and it's moving forward. And I saw then that they're planning to do an IPO in a, in a year or two. For that one, I'll definitely invest. So now that we know kung ano yung mga companies na under sa kanila, uh, we have to give our insights in terms of ano ba yung mangyayari sa businesses na to during COVID and post-COVID. What I can say in terms of traveling kasi right now, it's very hard na umalis ka because there's still COVID. Wala pa rin solusyon eh, di ba? Um, pwede ka pa rin magkasakit. Nakakatakot naman. Pero, one thing I can say, lalo na sa ating mga Filipinos, alam niyo yung kasabihan na pag pinipigil, lalong nanggigigil. <laughs> So, dahil pigil na pigil tayong lahat sa pagta-travel, pigil na pigil tayong lahat, ganyan. So, once naman lift yan lahat ng travel bans and 
um, actually not just being lifted yung travel bans but more of run na ng cure sa COVID I am sure lahat yan mag-aalis maglalaya sana and those people kasi who can afford traveling those are those people na may trabaho pa rin or may may pera or may savings talaga with a lot of OFWs coming back um, at the end of the day, magkakaroon din ng chance, uh, makabalik sila, and of course, they will need to travel going back to those countries. I think they will be rehired. Tapos, aside from that, Macro Asia was actually able to um, get a contract with the government, which is $10 billion, yung Sangli Airport. Although, when it was awarded to them, actually, their stock price went down. I'm not quite sure why the companies or why the investors that didn't like the fact that they're gonna do that. Um, although, in, in in, in their um, disclosures or news, sabi nila hindi sila mag SRO or mag stock rights offer, they will not raise another capital in terms of equity uh, kasi they don't like the dilution. So, gusto nila mag loan lang. So, ila leverage na kasi under leverage naman sila, which is which is good kasi syempre mas mas mura naman minsan na mag mangutang ka na lang kaysa mag raise ka ng IPO ng SRO kasi medyo pricey. Anyway, so in terms of fundamental, I think it's a strong company. I think it it's a good one. I'll probably invest into this. Lalo na they are getting into water. I'm really, really excited for that. Let's start now with the quantitative analysis. For the quantitative, they have five-year earning performance. Very good. And then the year-on-year -year EPS growth was actually 9.09%. It seems quite low, pero because of their expansions, I guess the marami kasing expenses that they, they have to reflect on their financial statement. That's why it's lower. Pero if you look at the growth of the company, we'll look into that later. It's a cash flow. You'll see that they're actually well invested and they have very good growth potential. And then the year-to-date PE growth is actually at 61.94%. So, sales siya ng 61%. Ayan, so as you can see, this is the year-end price from 2015 to 2019. So, nakita nyo, no, 2016, 1.85 per share. Tapos biglang nag-jump ng 2017 ng 17.58. So, as you can see, the stock price is going down. But the earnings is actually going up. So, may reason yung pag-akyat niya. May laman, hindi siya yung bubble lang. So, kumita siya. May earnings siya. If you look at the sales, makita nyo, super laki nung tinas. Dumoble siya, pero yung earnings niya is almost the same lang. Anong ibig sabihin nun? Ibig sabihin, marami silang expenses and probably that's for the growth. So, as you can see, yung price to earning, nagmumura siya, no? So, nagmumura na siya. <laughs> Hindi nagmumura ha, as in, naging cheaper na siya. Ganun. So, yung EBITDA, as you can see, it's growing. Kasi the revenue sometimes or sales, it's not really reflective of how the company works. So EBITDA actually is the operational side. So the operations of the company is actually growing as you can see from this level. Diba? So, ibig sabihin, nag improve yung business nila over time. So the revenue in flight and other catering services. Yun yung um, number one niya na revenue source. And then the next one is ground handling and aviation. So yun yung main driver niya ng revenue. Therefore, if that's the case, then it's heavily affected right now by COVID. And by the time that COVID is cured or mahanap ng solution, definitely their um, business will flourish again. So, it's heavily related to, you know, what will happen next or when it will be resolved. So, in terms of revenue, so, sila yung malaki. Pero, in terms of profit, pinakamalaki si maintenance, repairs, and overalls. Ito siguro yung kay Lufthansa. Kasi, partner sila. So, probably, they, they manage the operation side. So, yung equity in net earnings of associates na lang yung pumapasok. Wala nang wala nang cost and everything. Yun yung gusto natin makita kanina eh. So, ayan. Alam na natin yung quantitatives. Let's move to the broker's recommendation. The latest one for Mac is um, last June 28 from Call Financials. Um, let's see what they say. So, the first quarter earnings dropped 92% year on year to 
17.6 million. Guys, 92% ang laki nun, di ba? So, that's first quarter. What more yung second quarter pag nila, nirelease nila, di ba? Um, ang problem din kasi dito kay Mac, kasi syempre, uh, malalaki yung komisari niya. Even if there's uh, uh, flights na, and hindi pa siya fully operational. So, once you open your um, komisaris, kailangan, ano ka, 100% pa rin yung um, operational cost mo, pero the revenue is not as good as before kasi not every airlines is um, working right now, di ba? So, yun yung isa sa mga things that they will really have to suffer. They will definitely get those, ano, um, losses. Kasi if they don't operate naman, they will lose the customers which is not good then for them. So, they'd rather um, shoulder the cost as of the moment until such time na everything is okay na and then they will start ano, maximizing their efficiency as, again in their operations. That's kind of the thing that could be an issue. So, ang sinasabi niya dito is at its current price of 6.71 per share, Mac is trading only at 12 times its 2020 um, estimated PE based on the consensus, consensus estimates. Um, note that the company's earnings face downside risk due to the pandemic and certainly of air travel and near future. A consensus also has a hold rating on Mac with a future value estimate of 6.5 per share. And now for the charting. Kailan tayo bibili? Let's talk about that. Okay, so for the chart, as you can see, ano siya, nag, nag over bought siya as it went down. So, we'll see if it's gonna go up again or it's gonna go down. Uh, but right now, it seems like um, nandun siya sa bottom no nung green line. Diba? So, it's either it breaks down, goes back to um, the bottom, the yellow one, or it goes up to green line. Dito sa sa taas na yan. Pero for um, short waves, I'm looking at 6.2 to 8.82. Pero for long wave, it's 4.6 to 11.89. Yeah, if you can wait for 4.6. Kasi maglalabasan na nun ng, ano, eh, ng quarterly um, income. Most likely, syempre, super baba yan si, um, si Mac. So better yet, wait for that um, result or report and then that's the time you enter. Kasi definitely, it will go down and then it will go up again. <laughs> Kung gusto mong pumasok sa kanya. If you really want to enter at this point. So, in terms of growth potential, mukhang napakaganda nung growth potential niya. Pero, kailangan matapos muna yung COVID. Okay? Kasi, I think within a year or two, it will actually be flourishing. It's a... Uh, I actually, I was really amazed uh, by how they they grew their company from 2016 to now it was actually a very good one and hindi siya yung inflated lang or parang kunyaring growth lang it's an actual growth that they were actually able to expand their business they it, they were able to make it grow so very fundamentally strong siya for me at least kasi Merong laman. Ah, masabi, may laman yung business. Pag may laman, ibig sabihin, may revenue talaga. Merong kang operational business. Ganyan, you can expand. You're planning to expand. And the good thing about that is, medyo uh, frontliner sila. And there's still a lot of space to expand the business, which is good. Ibig sabihin, this one is just a start and they can still grow bigger, di ba? And when it comes to the aviation part, and at the same time, lalo na magkakaroon ng mga bagong airports, syempre, kailangan mo ng catering dun sa mga areas niyo. So you can expand on those areas, magbubukas ka ulit. And since they are expert already on that area, it's very easy for them to actually put up new new stuff there. Um, on top of that, syempre, yung sa wastewater, dahil nga, medyo nauna sila doon. And actually, there's a lot of companies as well na gusto na rin pumasok sa water. Ayan, guys. So, sana may natutunan kayo sa akin. Wish ko lang. <laughs> and please subscribe if you haven't subscribed yet. And please hit the notification button if you wanted to stay updated sa ating mga videos. Shout out nga pala kay Captain Diaz. Hello! And sana you're watching and I hope you learned something new from our channel again. And if you guys wanted shout out next time, please comment below para malista natin yan. Bye!